Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Hotfix. Today we're going to be talking about the Steam Box or as its fancy code name. Well, the fancy code name it has. <laughs> Piston. Good lord. Who would have thought it? Piston. In an engine. A steam engine. I still also in they missed a Piston trick. power. They they missed a trick. They absolutely missed a trick. They could have they could have painted it orange and called it the orange box. That would have been far better than piston. <laughs> it, it just it should have been done. Oh dear. Okay, so a load of information has just been released about the piston at CES, which is the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. And what I'm going to do is give you a quick rundown of the specs. Now these are early doors, so early stages specs. These could change, but. I would imagine most of this will probably kind of stay the same. So get ready for a load of stats. So it's Linux based. Now we know that. We've, we've known that for some time. With all the the stuff Valve have been doing, porting Steam over to Linux and getting certain games to work and stuff like that. So we kind of know that. It's going to be made by Z3 or XI3. I've never actually heard of that company, so I've got no idea how to pronounce it. But they make small computers. The piston will offer up to one terabyte of internal storage and offer modular component updates, including the option to upgrade the PC's CPU and RAM. No. So what they're looking to do is offer... Well, hang on. We'll go crazy in a minute, but let me just go through the, the, the mad details. So they're looking to offer something kind of between a console and a PC gaming type of experience for the front room, for the living room. But they don't want to make it so stupidly powerful so it'll be massively expensive because obviously that'll put a lot of people off. I think at the moment, the, problem the, the, the price range of it, it's it's kind of difficult to tell, but the manufacturer that's making it, XI3, Xi3, Xi, however that's pronounced, they they currently sell sort of equivalent machines that have got the same kind of power for $999. Like, that's that's their... That is the, the sort of the spec that they've said it's going to be. It's going to be around that kind of power. But if it's nine hundred ninety nine dollars, that's a bit mental, and it's not going to that's compete very with anything. Expensive. Yeah, well, that's one of the problems we've got. Let me just finish off the specs. So it's it's going to it's going to support Steam because that's what it is. It's a Steam box. It's designed for that. Now you may have remembered, or, or you might have even tried out the big picture mode for Steam, where you can play it on a television. Now that's obviously been designed with a Steam box in mind, or Piston, or whatever the hell they're going to call it. I mean, Piston is just a working code name, so we can we can get away with calling it the Steam box. Um. Now for the tech specs, well, the demo unit, it, it, they don't really give that much information, to be honest. And, you know, beyond like a list of ports and stuff, which is, I'm not going to read that out because that's kind of boring. Uh, and like Kiri said, the, the pricing, it's going to be interesting to see what that turns out to be because it's obviously got to be based on performance. And are they going to have different models? Some parts of it are modular, so you can upgrade. Other parts probably won't be things like the GPU. Now, you look at the size of the Steam box, it's quite small based off the, the model they've been showing at CES, which can cannot possibly contain a, a modern generation GPU at all. I mean, my card is like three times, it's it, it probably even four times the size of the Steam box. There's no way it would work, you know, that wouldn't fit in. But I think um, what we're going to do now is we're going to go straight into the debate. So I'll give you the... I'll give you the, the information that we've got so far on the box. The question is, how is this going to impact gaming? It's going to be interesting to see, for starters, exactly how it using Linux. Yeah, it's using Linux. How is that going to work? I mean, I know Valve have well, Gaben, Big Gabe. He has stated he's, Gabe. Not, he's not satisfied with Windows 8. He doesn't like it very much because it's a closed platform, requires loads of messing around to get things approved as applications on it. It's just generally not that great in his opinion. Um, and he's been saying that Linux could be the future of gaming for quite a while. Now the fact that the Steam Box is going to be purely Linux is a fairly good indication that they are really trying to shift everything over to there. Which is quite a bold move to make, let's face it. Because Microsoft, they're not a small company. It's not like they don't have the global monopoly on operating systems or anything. So that alone... I mean, have, have Valve got the influence to do that? Have they got the power to... Well, I think out of anybody, probably, yeah. But what I, there are not that many games on Linux that have been ported across to Linux. There are some, okay. But, I mean, the, the interesting thing is Mac gaming is more prevalent than Linux gaming, which is, I mean, who the hell plays games on a Mac? This is, like, it's crazy. But, obviously, with Valve pushing behind that, there will be more and more titles coming over to Linux, which then can be used on the Steam box. So... I, I think they probably do have the influence 
to make an impact. Whether they can completely take over, I don't know, and it will obviously take some time. And it's quite an interesting way to go about it as well. I mean, they've, as we've said, they've stated their on their sort of ongoing preference for Linux now that Windows 8's been uh, royally slammed for being a bit, a bit closed, a bit hostile to uh, to applications and so on. But it's kind of interesting that they'd go straight for kind of introducing it via a Valve only thing. You know, like it's not like it's uh, suddenly okay, PC gamers, we want you to change what operating system you're using. Instead, it's like this is their own kind of console, sort of halfway between a console and a PC. So it's one of those things where if you get a Steam box, you will be using Linux, which is kind of, it's quite clever, really, because it doesn't leave you much of a choice. And presumably, once you've used Linux via the Steam box, it's going to make a few people think, well, okay, maybe it's not so bad. You know, maybe that's... Yeah, but I would game. imagine... No, 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 no. I would imagine the Steam box will probably be some sort of... Uh, it won't be totally open. It won't be a case of... Now, this will maybe go against everything Valve kind of stands for, but I doubt it will be a computer you can turn on and use it as if it's your home computer. Now, you probably... You probably can if you want. Yeah, I mean, there'll be people out there who will, who will go to these extreme lengths to sort of hack the thing. Or, I mean, you, you probably won't even have to hack it. It'll just be an option and you can, like, do whatever you want with it. But I would imagine in its standard form, it will just basically have Steam on it. So when you turn it on, it'll just be Steam. It'll be some sort of modified UI version of Steam that runs on Linux. And then you just click the games and, and run the games. I think that's probably what'll happen. Because what you've got to think is, if this is something, a product that is aimed halfway between a gaming PC and sort of a console, and it's designed to be in a living room, then it cannot be massively complicated to use because that would put people off. If you're sitting down in your front room and you want to play a game of Dark Souls, because, I mean, that, let's face it, that would be ideal on this. So you've got your controller. You sit down. Okay, I'm going to play Dark Souls. You do not want to, for a start, you've got a controller. You may have a keyboard and mouse, but are you really going to sit there with a keyboard and mouse in your front room? Probably not. So these are like a lot of things that they have to take into consideration. And I... I... I mean, I'm, uh, it's it's sort of like you know, and I look at it and it's like, will will big picture mode be enough to tempt over the console crowd? Well, it should be because that's all console gaming is anyway. You know, they just play big picture games. As retarded as that sounds, they're playing on big televisions, ain't they? They're playing their whatever games they're playing on the big telly, and that's the sort of thing they want. The question is though, will your average console gamer think, you know what, I'll buy the Steam box? Will it have enough pull? Will it have enough games? So, will it have enough power? The, the game side of it, I think Valve would be absolutely fine with, provided they can sort it so that all the games work on Linux, which I suppose is going to be the biggest obstacle more than anything, because the big picture mode that they uh, beat it on Steam, that worked quite well. I mean, I, I had a look at it a few times, and it was, it was nice and smooth. It was quite a nice interface. It felt like a console, which is obviously the route they're going with it. Well, well, there you go. I bet you the big picture will be the the UI that'll just be totally on on the Steam box. Yeah, but it's like it's it's a weird thing where it's it needs to be competitively priced, but it also needs to be good enough that maybe PC gamers want to get in there as well, because that's their biggest market at the moment. It's it's gamers using some form of PC, whether it's a Mac or whether it's just a, a Windows machine. It, that's you know that is the core audience. That is the people they're selling to at the moment. So, are they going after a brand new market? Are they just going for console gamers? Are they trying to tempt PC gamers into uh, into going for well, it this, as well? This is it. it. Well, this is it, ain't it? Will a PC gamer want a Steam box? Now, we know most PC gamers are madly in love with Gaben and his company because almost every game they produce is absolutely, you know, amazing. They provide Steam, which is the best digital distribution store. They run massive sales. Everybody loves Steam, on the whole. But why would you want a Steam box? Why would I want a Steam box? This is what I'm trying to uh, work out. It's like, what what possible benefit does it give me over my desktop? I, 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 it's like I I don't really I don't have a TV. I don't watch a TV. If I'm playing games, I'm at my computer. I'm not sitting in front of the television. I'm not downstairs in the living room. I'm none of that. I'm working on my computer. I'm playing games on my computer. Yeah. Another issue I've got with it is. Okay, bits of the hardware are supposedly swappable, so modular. So we can say, okay, I now need 12 gig of RAM, so the 8 gig is, got, is not enough, so I'm going to get 4 more, or, or whatever. How would you upgrade the graphics, though? Because the, the size of this thing, it, it is not going to be able to run games, modern games, 
at the highest setting, especially with us going into the next era of gaming as the consoles start coming out. Yeah, I mean, it's the same. I expect them to, well, I expect them to get announced at E3. What are you going to do then? Are you just going to sit there and run games in low because that's acceptable? Well, hang on a minute. That's not acceptable. <laughs> Why would I go and play you know, games on, arguably, an inferior platform when I could play on my computer and have a, a much better experience because I know graphically it's going to be superior, it's going to be smoother, it's going to have a higher frame rate, and all the rest of this stuff. Like, this is the main thing that puts me off the Steam box completely because I do not understand where a device that small is going to get its its graphical power from. Yeah. How is it going to possibly compete against something even like an Xbox? I mean, the thing's the size of a, a grapefruit. A new Xbox. Not that's an old one, a, but a new one. A grapefruit? Yeah. That's tiny. I mean, I, I, frankly, how are they, how are they going to get enough power in there to run you know, modern games in the first place is like some sort of black magic to me because I look at the size of my graphics card... And I've got a full-size tower here, and it's done in, it just bloody fits in. So how have they, I mean, how have they managed to squeeze all of that into something the size of a grapefruit is, is as close to wizardry you as can't. we're going to get? So it's like, how, how is it going to compete you, you when can't. a new generation comes out? I don't think it's out? even possible. I don't think that's even possible, because how the hell would they integrate the graphics into a, a box that small and provide a cooling solution for it? They just couldn't do it. It's, it's too small. Unless they've got some sort of amazing technology they've kept hidden. I mean, it, oh, which it, find it, very it's hard to yeah, it's, it's, it, they, You'd have thought someone somewhere would have found out about it or come up with an equivalent product by now, but it's just... I mean, that's kind of a worry. And also there's... It, it's supposed to be something between console gaming and PC gaming. So you've got the massive library of Steam games, and the games are the same games that you get on the PC, but you can't tweak them and mod them the same as a PC. But they'll be more flexible than traditional console titles. That's what, that's what Valve have said. To me, that's like, is it is it one thing? Is it the other thing? I mean, is it going to draw the console crowd in because the games are going to be more complex? I think that they're sort of blurring the lines between... Because if you look at it, you've got PC gaming community, you've got Xbox community, you've got PlayStation community, yeah, and you've got, like, Nintendo community, and you've got, let's just theorise for a moment, Steambox community, yeah? The Steambox community is not tied into, the Ste into, into that platform. It could still play its games on the PC platform. So it's got two platforms there. It's sort of, I mean, I can see what they're trying to do, bring the, the gaming desktop into the front room. But what I just don't get is how that's going to be possible unless they use some sort of streaming technology from the actual PC to the stream box and it just relays it to the telly, in which case it isn't the Steam box doing it, it's your PC. I don't know how it would even compete with a console. I know consoles are going this way because if you look at a modern console today, the hardware is not very good, so the Xbox and the uh, PlayStation 3. But... What they offer is quite good. So they've got like the Xbox Live Arcade, the, the PlayStation equivalent, and all the rest of it. There are a lot of downloadable services. There's good online infrastructure. What is Steam? Well, Steam has got a shitload of downloadable games on it, and it's a really good platform for that. Now, Valve have already got that in place. What they don't have is the hardware solution to take on the console crowd. Now, it's obviously a brave thing to be doing because to try and attempt to take on the massive brands of the, the Xbox and the PlayStation is is quite an ask. And the way they're doing it is, I think, quite a good way to do it because they are going down the Linux kind of open platform route. It's not massively tied into some... Because, I mean, they, they could easily produce like a Linux version of uh, some sort of Valve operating system, which is totally tied into Valve, and you can't do anything else with it. Is that the way the Steam box is going to go? Will you be able to run other games on it? Are they just going to be Steam games? Does that even matter? Are most of your PC games Steam games anyway now? Could you, could you play World of Warcraft on it? There's so many different questions, and it's it's crazy. I mean, it looks to me like they're doing... What they're going for is is not so much the PC crowd. Like, to be honest, I can kind of see... I could I can kind of see where the Steam box might fit in. If, like, say, for example, you could sign into the Steam box using your Steam ID, and you could then download any games you bought on the PC on your Steam box. And I, that seems a bit unlikely, because that would require a hell of a lot of extra work. But say such a thing was possible. If, say, you were having a big group of people around or whatever, you know, you've got, you've got mates who are gamers, you've got a Steam box downstairs connected to your, to your telly, that, I can sort of see the social situations in which a PC gamer might load up a Steam box, because you can crowd around a big TV a lot more easily than you can crowd around a monitor. You know, that, that's bringing the PC gamer closer to the console gamer. But I think it's well, going to Well, here we go. A PC gamer is not social. 
That is a massively damning statement I've just made. Of course we are, but we don't. I mean, what are we doing right now? We're like 15 miles apart, yet we're still communicating and talking with each other. We play loads of games together. We are not in the same room. We cannot... I mean, I don't know whether this is just me, but when I see things like, you know, like uh, Wii adverts where they're jumping around having a game of Wii Sports, I've never seen that happen. <laughs> never. Who the hell does that? Even if you have done it. I'm, uh, well, okay. I did do the um, Wii Fitness board with a few people and the bloody, um, there was something with a, a microphone one year at Christmas time. But that was it. It's not like this is not something I'm going to be doing all the time. So I kind of don't really relate to that at all where it's, yeah, everybody will sit down in the front room and we'll all have a game of something on our PC, on our Steam box. It's like, well, no, so I think that's, because I want to play. I, th- <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. I think it. maybe that's, that might be where the majority of PC gamers all, all you know, drop off away from the Steam box. Because, I mean, I, I've got that experience just because a couple of my friends are console gamers. They've got a gaming PC, but they've got, an, I mean, one of them's got an Xbox and he's got a library that fills an entire spare room of games. And so, you know, if we go around to his, generally speaking, we'll play on the Xbox because, you know, that's that's what he's got. So in that respect, I think maybe, I think it's more aimed at the console crowd. I can see instances where maybe the PC gamer might look at it and think, actually, maybe that is a good idea. But I think more than anything, it's aimed at bringing the console people closer to the PC gaming people. Because let's face it, right, you've, you've played on an Xbox 360 since it came out. That's what you've had all the time. The Steam box comes out. At the drop of a hat, you've got more games, you've got a, you know, a, a more an open source, more developed platform, you've got a huge social network, which is what Steam, I mean Steam is now a huge social network, it's not just about the, the distribution, you can see everything, your friends, it's just insane. Well, the Steam of, community, yeah, yeah, yeah you know, all that stuff. You've got, you know, you've got all these facilities for connecting with other gamers who like the same game. I can kind of see it taking off, provided, but this is all provided it is not more expensive than the new Xbox. Because that, for me, is the big... It's the big point. How much is it going to be? Because all of this, all we're talking about, will either work or fail, I think, depending on the price. Because I think they've got the recipe right. I think it's... It will attract console gamers. I think it will bring them closer to PC gaming. I think it'll open a fucking whole world of opportunity for trying out new games. Because, let's face it, the, the Steam library is insanely huge. If they can get a fraction of the games that are on Steam... Onto the Steam. Box. Well, of course, one thing we've missed out is uh, indie games. Now, obviously, these would have to be ported across to Linux, but they require no power. It, you know, like CPU, RAM. On the whole, you know, things like I'm Miami, and you could even argue Minecraft, although we all know that's on Java and it's not exactly the best. But things like that could easily run on a Steam box because we, we, we just know. It, it, listen, it's fact. It's not going to have a high end. It is not going to be a high end system. You might be able to put an i7 in it and put loads of RAM in it or whatever, but you are not going to be able to turn up and put a massive graphics card in it to be sitting there playing the latest games like Planet Side 2 on Ultra. You're just never going to be able to do that because it's too small. It, there's like a physical limitation there. They just ain't the technology. And I, I don't know. I mean, when I, like, like I said before, when I look at this, I, I just do not understand how, to me, the Steam box appeals. I, don't, I do not get it. I'm like, yeah, what is it? A media center for my television? What, what? See, I'm, why would I play games on it? Why would I play games on it? I just don't get it. I just don't get it. See, I'm 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 kind of on the other side. I think I can see the appeal that it would hold for console gamers, but I don't think there's going to be much appeal for PC gamers because I've already got basically I've already got Steam. I've already got a PC. I've already got everything that the Steam box is. So why I would need why I would need it? Why would a, why would a console gamer come across though when his brand new consoles are about to hit? His Xboxes. He's got his his. They're used to doing that. I, I, I don't know. It just it could be a massive flop. Now, this could be a really big flop, or it could be the start of something you know, great where it's blurring these boundaries between different communities and, and sort of opening up console games to the PC crowd. But I think at that, we'll wrap it up because we could just talk all day about this. So what I want to know, guys, is what you think about the Steam Box. Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? Are you a console gamer? You're probably not because you're watching the unit last video. So you're a PC gamer. What are you, you know, what do you think? Would you buy a Steam box? Irregardless of its specs, would you buy a Steam box? You know, if it had a, a great graphic solution. If it was bigger, you know, could, this is only a prototype. It could be different when it gets launched. Um, and no matter what so happens, many questions. it's going to be very, very interesting to watch it develop. It really is because oh, yeah. There's, yeah. there's just so many, so many things we don't know at the moment or haven't been clarified. 
and uh, I tell you, well, what, also Valve have got the virtual reality crap that they're supposed to be announcing at some point this year. Yeah, maybe that could tie in with it. We just don't know. It's crazy. So we'll leave it at that, guys. So as I said, comment. We'll reply to the comments, and um, I think we'll catch them and you, Mr. Kiryoff, or I will catch them and you a bit later on, maybe S- tomorrow. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> the worst ending to a video ever. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, which is at Unit Lost Gaming, for all channel updates and my crazy ramblings. And follow Kiryoff. He's at Kiryoff for his even crazier ramblings. And uh, we'll catch you next time, people. Toodaloo.